Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Welcome back to my Walter boss run in Don't Starve Together. Last time we took down Bee Queen with our slingshot from atop Pinky the Beefalo. And now, it's time to focus on clearing out the ruins and get ready for Fuel Weaver. While spring is here though, we need to fight Moose Goose and grab some down feathers for our weather pains. We can fight her with an ornery Beefalo and not worry about the sanity penalty from getting hit. I'm doing some animation cancelling with the beefalo attack, but it's slightly modified from the inventory switching I was using before. Moose Goose honks after 4 attacks, and that will send your equipped hand item flying away. So to keep the attacking consistent, I'm keeping the cane in my tooltip. I can still cancel the animation by using the left mouse button to equip and unequip it. So when I move in to attack, I start with the cane off. Then after 4 hits, the cane is back on my tooltip. That way I can get in a couple extra hits as she honks, and I don't need to go running after the cane. The trick with this is to keep track of how many times Moose has attacked. After 4 attacks, she'll honk so you can keep hitting her until her next headbutt. While fighting the Mosslings, we can switch to an Eyebrella and not worry about getting zapped by lightning. As long as we're riding, we don't need to worry about wearing armor. Just be sure to pick up the down feathers as soon as they drop so they don't get burned by lightning strikes. I love spring because between the geese and the frog rains, we always end up with a ton of meat. Now that I have bundling wraps, I decided to go with meaty stew as Walter's main food. Now hear me out. I know it's not quite as efficient as it is with other characters because of Walter's low max hunger, but believe it or not, most recipes are still more efficient than the alternatives. Let's say we make a meaty stew from one monster meat, one large meat, and two morsels. That still gives Walter an extra 41 hunger versus just eating the ingredients. The only way you can get close to that with meatballs is if you use one morsel and three ice. Even if you make meatballs from a morsel and three berries, that's only an improvement of about 12.5 hunger. I don't plan to farm tons of crockpot filler, so this will maximize efficiency and, you know, just simplify Walter's diet all at the same time. For Walter on a beefalo, hunger is really the only stat you need to worry about most of the time. It's pretty nice, to be honest. Start of summer, I'm back in the ruins, looking to kill Ancient Guardian and clear the rest before I go hunt for the atrium. I brought 34 butterfly wings and some silk to the pseudoscience station, where I'm going to use a construction amulet to prototype my Glossomer saddle. This is a massive upgrade for the beefalo, and it's a good time to pick up an extra bit of speed. It's going to be an absolutely essential piece of equipment moving forward. This rogue rook destroyed the station that I had upgraded, and I'm taking this as a sign that maybe we should use the completed station set piece for future crafting. Honestly, this game throws you so many curveballs, I kind of expected this. The statue set piece always comes with two bishops. Now that I have the speed of a Glossomer saddle, I'm going to try kiting bishops as much as possible. For two bishops, I'm going to use an ice staff to freeze one of them while I kite the other. Freeze rounds would have been ideal, but I totally forgot to prototype them upstairs. Remember, Walter still absorbs the damage of projectile attacks, so it's beneficial to avoid as much of these shots as possible. I will still lose a bit of sanity from this damage, so to restore it, I will hang out around the nightmare lights during the nightmare phase while wearing a bee queen crown. It might be one of the few uses for the crown with Walter, but it is really nice that he can still reverse negative auras for sanity gain, even though the aura won't affect him at all otherwise. Free light for fighting nightmare creatures. I won't say no. I'm going to use the slingshot on Ancient Guardian, and while I'm in the ruins, I'm going to prototype a bunch of cursed rounds. This is the strongest ammo in the game, and it's especially nice versus stationary mobs. Thulocyte fragments are not the cheapest thing, but 10 rounds per frag is honestly not that bad of a deal. I'm making 200 rounds, which should leave me plenty left over after Ancient Guardian. Day 64, we head into the labyrinth to fight the big dog. I made a video on this strategy that basically uses timed shots to cancel Guardian's charge. I did this fight before the update, which made Ancient Guardian and lots of other mobs very resistant to stunlock from ranged attacks. But I was relieved to learn that this strategy will still work after the update. Honestly, this fight is in desperate need of a rework. It's highly repetitive, far too easy to cheese, and the new update just made it worse. But I know that Clay is aware of the problem, so until they fix it, do what you gotta do to get this fight done. Ancient Guardian took about 120 cursed rounds to kill. So that's 
12 Nightmare Fuel and 12 Thulacite Frags. Not too bad if you ask me. I usually lose about as much with the Thulacite Crown and Magiluminescence. And this method will likely not cost any healing once you get the hang of it. The reward for not cheesing is a Lazy Explorer and three green gems. Some of the best chest loot I've ever seen. I'm gonna leave the B-Flow parked in the arena while I run around the labyrinth and raid the chests. It's kind of a pain dismounting to open each chest, and then, you know, I gotta refeed to remount. I don't need pinky triggering every single spider web. But we got a total of five green gems from the lab. These chests are always worth raiding. Now here's my workflow for clearing these sacred biome set pieces. I go straight for the bishop, hit it once, and then try to kite the attack. The rooks will run in and do more damage, just look for another opening and move back in. You can keep dodging the bishop for as long as you need, and they shouldn't last too long with the rooks helping. After that, you can use the rooks to clear the broken clockworks until one of them dies, then just clean up the rest. It's possible to completely clear and pick these areas without dismounting your beefalo. I've got blue caps for Pinky in case she gets low health, but with the added speed, she's not really taking that many hits. If there are more broken clockworks to hammer, I try to keep the beeflo's obedience up so that I can quickly jump back on her if a bishop or rook spawns. You do not want the rook ramming a beeflo because that will do 200 damage if you're not mounted. I might consider feeding Pinky before doing this again because she loses obedience more slowly with a full stomach. I'm clearing the completed station set piece with the same strategy freezing one bishop while kiting the other. Sometimes you can back off and get them to attack at the same time, and then you can dodge both attacks simultaneously before going in for three hits. This is so much nicer than just tanking the hits and losing a ton of armor and sanity. Then I moved all of our loot to the station. Normally I dislike crafting here, because of the four lights, it's hard to do any work during the nightmare phase. Even after you kill the nightmare creatures, you'll be constantly insane and more shadow creatures will spawn. But Walter's sanity will be totally fine. Just kill the shadows and get to work. I'm using a backpack to store ruins loot so that I can do all my crafting while mounted just to avoid any unexpected damage to Walter. But at this point, the ruins are clear, so I'm heading back up. I want to catch the tail end of summer so I can pick some cactus flowers and bundle them up for our future trip to Hermit's Island. I need 10 flowers for the final house upgrade, and one more to make a cactus salad for the pearl quest. It's the last day of summer, so I can avoid the heat by just wearing an eyebrella during the day. At the start of autumn, I'm converting all my remaining marble into beans and planting them. Berger will spawn this season, and once the marble is ready, I can have him harvest everything. Then it's time to assemble the suspicious marble pieces. The set piece is in the mosaic biome and there's a wormhole right in front of it. This wormhole saved me a ton of time because most of the pieces were close to the other side. Remember, you could jump through while carrying one of the pieces and as long as you have the bell, your beefalo will also follow you through. So it only took a couple days to assemble everything, and we can fight the shadow pieces in 8 days. Since spring, I've been going on every hunt I possibly can and on day 74, it finally pays off with a Yukus. They can't phlegm you while you're riding, so as long as your beefalo is full health, you can just hold down attack button to kill it. Still, I'm using the slingshot to supplement the melee damage. There's likely a strategy to kill it with just the slingshot on a beeflo, but I am not a patient man. Anyway, the sheep drops three steel wool, and we can use the fourth piece from Kloss to make our war saddle. I'll still use the Glossper saddle for now, but there is one big fight in particular for which I look forward to using the war saddle. While I'm waiting for night 81, I'm gonna try and find the atrium. I popped practically every tentapillar in the caves looking for it. Fortunately for Walter, these guys are very easy to beat. Hit it a couple times with the beefalo, then back off, switch to the slingshot, and fire off a few rounds. This will cause more baby tentacles to spawn at your location and cause other babies to despawn. So you can easily find openings to run back in, hit a few more times, and then back off and slingshot again. Cursed rounds are perfect for tentapillars because they don't move so every shadow tentacle is guaranteed to hit it. Finally, on day 77, we found the atrium connected through the green mush tree forest. There is a place to telepoof over from the mainland, but I'm gonna try and preserve my lazy explorers as much as possible for Fuel Weaver. Bears respond on day 79 in the desert. 
I'm gonna lure him over to my deciduous forest and use him for a bit of tree farming before the shadow piece fight. I need to take him through the swamp, so I'm trying to get him running as much as possible to avoid catching him on a tentacle. Once we're in the deciduous forest, I can use the beefalo's speed to extend the length of Berger's charge. Remember, he only harvests wood from trees when he's swiping or charging, not when he's walking. But as per usual, poison birch nuts will not be a problem. Berger just stomps them down. After a day or so, I'm leaving him at a peninsula and running home to get ready for the shadow pieces. And now it's time. I'm killing the knight first, then bishop, and finally rook. I'm gonna do this fight on a beefalo, but I would highly recommend against that unless you have a glossomer saddle. The tier 2 bishop only hits for 35, and if you're moving, then you'll only take one hit per attack. But without the Glossomer Saddle, we won't have enough speed to dodge the Tier 3 Rook, and the Beefalo will absolutely die. That said, as long as you're moving when the Rook disappears, you can very consistently dodge with the Glossomer. Couple that with Walter's immunity to these enormous sanity auras, and you have a fight which is fairly straightforward. The fight still makes me nervous because it's a tough retreat if things start going badly, and you don't really have many opportunities to heal the Beefalo, so just make sure it's full health and keep moving when the shadows attack. If you're looking for a safer method or don't have a glossomer saddle, then here's the cheese strat. Build a boat and row it a few paces away from shore. Pop the shadow pieces and kill the bishop first. Then go for the rook. On a beefalo, you can still dodge both these tier 2 pieces even with a normal saddle. For the tier 3 knight, just hop on the boat and use the slingshot at a safe distance. It'll take 239 gold rounds or 159 marble rounds. But gunpowder jazzy! Well, I don't know about you, but I'd say 24 gold nuggets is probably cheaper and faster to farm than a stack of gunpowder. Anyways, we got our shadow atrium and now we can make our final preparations for fuel weaver. Next time, Walter will fight the Big Ugly at the top of winter, and then we can go for Dragonfly and start exploring the ocean for the Lunar Island. Hope you're enjoying the series, and stay tuned for part 4, coming out very soon. Take care.